A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord God said to me, As for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like this house of rebellion, but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. It was then I saw a hand stretched out to me, in which was a written scroll which he unrolled before me. It was covered with writing front and back, and written on it was lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Son of man, he then said to me, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll I am giving you. I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. Verbum Domini How sweet my taste is your promise. How sweet my taste is your promise. In the way of your decrees I rejoice as much as in all riches. How sweet my taste is your promise. Yes, your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. How sweet my taste is your promise. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet my taste is your promise. How sweet to my palate are your promises, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet my taste is your promise. Your decrees are my inheritance forever, the joy of my heart they are. How sweet my taste is your promise. I gasp with open mouth, in my yearning for your commands. Nominus Fobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matthäum. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? 
If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, Amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. Verbum Domini Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? With this question, the disciples approach Jesus. <coughs> they know very well that in the kingdom of heaven, God is the greatest, and they are not trying to compete with God. They also know that in their small group, Jesus is the greatest. They have seen that he proclaims the kingdom is near, that he established it by working mighty signs and miracles. They know he is the Christ, and they acknowledge that. They know from the prophets like Daniel that when the Son of Man come, dominion will be given to him, and he will sit on the throne and rule forever. They are not trying to compete with Jesus. What they actually mean with their question, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, that is, who among us is the most important person? What places of honor are in store for us in the kingdom of heaven? That is what is on their mind. So this question betrays what they are thinking of. And actually, it is a bit insensitive of the disciples to be asking this, because Jesus has revealed not only that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, but also that the Son of God must go to Jerusalem and must suffer and be killed and raised up on the third day and as they are speaking, they are on the way to Jerusalem. By asking this question, it is as if they did not hear what Jesus said about the purpose of his going, that he is to undergo a passion in Jerusalem. But even so, there is no question, no matter how insensitive or off-key, that Jesus could not answer. He is a good teacher. And the good teacher knows how to make use of every question. So they ask for the greatest. He takes the smallest. And he puts a child in their midst, saying, you should change. You should become like children. Otherwise, you will not even enter the kingdom of heaven. What is the point that Jesus tries to make? What is the point in becoming like children? And if you're all grown up, how do you do that? The point Jesus is making is this. When people compare themselves among each other in order to determine who is the greatest, they are usually thinking of one thing, power. Who gets to decide what happens? Who will be looked upon by all the others? That's what they are thinking of. But actually, that is just one aspect of being the greatest, to be the ruler. There is another side to being the greatest, and that side 
is actually more important. The other side of being the greatest is that you take care of others and trust it to you. This is what Jesus wants them to realize. And it is best understood when you think of a family with children. In a family, the parents obviously are the greatest. Yet, parents give up a lot of their time and personal comfort to take care of the small ones, to provide them with food, with shelter, with safety, with warmth, with love. Parents undoubtedly are greater. But they serve the small ones. And that's a natural thing. And it is universally understood all over the world by all peoples of all times and places. What holds true on the natural level is now elevated by Jesus and applied to the level of God. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Of course, God is the greatest. But as obviously as God is the greatest, it should be equally obvious that God takes care of the small ones, of human beings, of his people. God is a good parent. And for Jesus, it is natural that we should address him as our father. God cares. How does God take care of us, his people? In today's first reading, we hear how God took care of his small ones in the past. God prepared the prophet Ezekiel to take God's own word to the people. Ezekiel was to eat a scroll containing the word of God, and that he should bring to the house of Israel. God wanted the people to hear his own voice, pleading with them to return to him, pleading like a father. Some of the words that the prophet Ezekiel wrote in his book, a little bit further on in another chapter, run like this. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flock when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and bring back, bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. I will feed them with justice. This prophecy, my brothers and sisters, is fulfilled in Jesus. God takes care of the disciples and of all mankind through Jesus. Jesus explains to his disciples that he is that shepherd. He is like that man with a hundred sheep. If only one gets lost, he will set out immediately to search for it. And when he finds it, he rejoices greatly. That is how much God cares for the small ones. In fact, Jesus is a shepherd unlike any other shepherd. He is willing to lay down his life for his sheep so that they may have life and have it to the full. That is the reason why they are headed for Jerusalem. The disciples may seem forgetful about that, about what he said, about going there to suffer, be killed and be raised up on the third day, but Jesus reminds them masterfully and gently. And he reminds us. He does that by putting a small one, a child, in their midst. And he makes the connection between that child 
and what he is about to do. He says, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. In general, we adult people, we don't like to be small. We like to be great, strong. We like to be able to take care of ourselves. We don't want to be vulnerable and dependent on others. But there is a danger to that, because whoever is great and can take care of him or herself runs the risk of thinking to be also independent from God. Whoever is aware of his own smallness, her own smallness, and dependence upon others is more likely to be open to God. And this is what Jesus wants to see in his followers, in us. Openness for God. And that goes together with acknowledging our own smallness. That goes together with becoming like children. The Gospel gives us the answer that Jesus gave to his disciples. And it does that for two reasons. The first reason is to make us understand how great and caring God wants to be for us. This Gospel is a compelling invitation to entrust ourselves to him. What human parents are ready to do for their children giving up their own time, their own comfort, the gospel lifts it up to a higher level, speaking of the kingdom of God. And it's not just words. The Eucharist shows how God takes care of us through Jesus. He becomes for us here the bread of life. He lays down his life so that we may have life to the full. Whoever eats and drinks his body and blood with faith remains in him. And whoever remains in him is as a branch firmly attached to the vine. It will bear much fruit. But you can only approach the altar as humble children. The second reason why the gospel gives us the answer of Jesus to that, to that question is because it is valid for us who want to follow him. If the greatness of Jesus consists in taking care of small ones, then it is evident that disciples in every time and place, if they really want to be with Jesus, that they must also take care of small ones, of people who are vulnerable and dependent. In the way God dealt with his people of old, in the way Jesus deals with his disciples, taking up his cross for them, in the same way we should now deal with others who come our way. We should take them by the hand, lead them out of harm's way, taking good care of them. But you know, sometimes the people that come our way are difficult and hard to get along with. Jesus gives us a hint how to go about this, how to be as children. He says, he teaches the disciples and us to look to other people with eyes of faith, to see them as God sees them. And for God, they have angels who always see the face of the Father in heaven. This is the help that he gives us. We are not to see each other with purely human eyes, but with faith. The prophet Ezekiel ate the word of God, the scroll that was given to him. May we take these words to heart and live by them and have life to the full. Amen.